This week, we celebrate the second week of Advent. Okay, this is where I need to jump in here. Because yes, Abby, we are celebrating the second week of Advent, and it is a wonderful celebration indeed. But the fact is, you know as well as I know that we are also celebrating something else, and that is we are celebrating the announcement of your engagement. Congratulations to you, Abby, from all of us in Simple Churches and all of the house churches across the country that are using these videos. We are super, super grateful for you. We're grateful for this wonderful gift of teaching that you evidently have. And we pray that it will be fanned into flames as you use these gifts in our own uh, teaching setting. But we are also thankful for this announcement and just pray the very best on your life as you look forward to this next chapter of your life as you plan your wedding and all of those other fun things. So bless you, Abby. I just couldn't let this go without jumping on and, and, and offering something to you. We love you very much. Okay, with that, back to the teaching. And just like last week, you'll realize that our passage of scripture is not one that I would consider to be a very Christmassy type of passage. We still aren't reading about baby Jesus who's lying in a manger, but instead we're once again reading from Romans but this time in chapter 15. Now, I do think that there is something here that we can read about that actually ties into this Advent season. So just bear with me as we go through this passage. To start us off, I want you to think about something. I wonder if you can take a moment to think back to the history classes that you would have taken in school growing up. For me, it was uh, in grade 10 in my high school. Did you enjoy them? Were they something that you dreaded? Personally, I really liked my history classes. My mother actually went to school for history. And so growing up, we talked about it a lot and always found that learning from the past helped to inform our future. And as we start reading our passage in Romans 15, we actually read about this concept. In verse four, Paul notes that everything that was written in the past was actually written to teach us something. It was written to help us build our understanding and learn from the past events. Paul is wanting the people of Rome to understand the significance of the scriptures. And so the scriptures aren't something, we need to clarify something. The scriptures aren't just nice stories that are supposed to make you just feel good, um, but they're actually supposed to be significant influences on our lives. As you read verse four, maybe you are like me and you start to think, why should this actually matter to me? Well, I think there are many reasons that we should start to consider the scriptures and how they are significant in our lives. And today we're going to go through and pick out some of these reasons. Number one, as we read at the end of verse four, we can see that they provide encouragement and in that encouragement, give us hope. For many people, we're entering into a season that actually isn't filled with a lot of joy or a lot of Christmas cheer. The Christmas season is painful for many as so many of us have lost loved ones our mourning, maybe dreams that we've had. We're taking time to reflect on how life isn't necessarily what you thought it was going to be. The scriptures are not here to just provide a false sense of hope, but actually one that is real, tangible, a hope that is sustaining. And if we jump to the end of our reading in verse 13, we see a prayer that Paul prays over the Romans, wanting God, who is the source of all hope, fill all people with complete joy and peace because of their trust in him. This joy, hope, and peace that Paul talks about to the Romans is not something that was just offered to the Romans in the past, but is actually something that is offered to us today. And so, but this does not mean that you have to put on a false sense of hope and joy and peace in order to approach God about this sustaining hope, this sustaining joy and sustaining peace. The Father is actually inviting you to come as you are with all the emotions that you may be feeling and offer it to him. 
He's asking you to trust that he can turn mourning to dancing, grief into joy and pain into peace. The author C.S. Lewis talks about the concept of joy often in his writings, and in his book called A Grief Observed, he writes this, Praise is the mode of love which always has some element of joy in it. Now, Lewis had gone through a horrible season where he had lost his wife. It was truly a sad story that maybe some of you relate to. And as Lewis was processing his grief, he writes that quote, He knew that in the midst of his grief, as he praised, God would bring a measure of joy. He knew about this endurance that the scriptures bring and the encouragement that they brought. And so with everything in him, he continued to praise the Lord in the midst of the trials that he was going through. This is not an easy task and one that should never be thought of as a simple task but it is one that has a promise attached to it and one that God sees and responds to. The second thing I want to point out is in, is in verse five and six, where we read a prayer that Paul prays over the church in Rome and says, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one, one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is reminding the Romans once again that God is the one that gives encouragement and endurance to anyone who calls on him. But he's also asking for God to unify his people so that they may ultimately bring glory to God. The Christmas season is a time where I, like many, maybe this is you, you like to reflect on the past year. What has happened in our personal lives? What has happened in the world? And I'm sure that for many of us, we're still in a bit of disbelief about some of the things that have happened throughout this last year. 2022 brought heavy times, divisive times. have They plagued our world, and we've had to learn how to walk through all of that. And I will admit that there have been many times where I have not wanted to walk through it. And I wanted to just kind of give up and hide away because it just felt overwhelming. It felt unsafe. But as as I was reading this passage over the last little bit, I've come to my conclusion that it's not my job to hide away when things feel hard. It's actually my design to keep glorifying God, the, the Father, and that he can give the endurance and the strength that I need to do that. What does that look like? Well, one, I think it means remaining in community with one another. Paul talks about God giving us the same attitude of mind towards each other, just as Christ had. And this means that we are to live unified and in harmony with one another. This doesn't always mean that we never disagree, but it does mean that at the end of the day, we may need to set our differences aside so that we can fulfill our purpose of glorifying God. In your groups, encourage one another often. Build one another up. Make it a practice to get together often and glorify God. And the third thing that I wanted to point out was from verse 7. Paul writes, accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. This season is a season for worshiping God, but it's also a season of generosity. Now, I know for some of the kids watching that this might sound like I've just said, it is the season for gifts. (laughs) And while I think that gifts are not a bad thing, I think gifts are great. I think generosity can actually be expressed in so many ways. The students that I work with here at Coburg Alliance are actually really good at the concept that we just read, accepting one another just as Christ has accepted you. They love people for who they are and welcome them into our community in hopes that one day they might actually be able to experience Jesus. They don't need them to be perfect before they can be accepted into our group. They just want them there. And how can we live this out as our communities and our different groups? 
where we accept people for who they are and welcome them into our community to bring them closer to Jesus. Jesus has accepted us, all parts of us, the good and the bad. So how can we welcome people more this season? Go above and beyond to show our generosity to others that they may experience the generosity that we have actually experienced with Jesus. In this passage in Romans, we read Paul's prayer of hope for the people of Rome. We read Paul's prayer for the people of Rome to praise God with everything that they have so that God would be glorified. We read that Paul's prayer of wanting the people of Rome to experience the hope and the joy and the peace that is found in God. This passage was written not solely for the people of Rome, but actually for us today. May we pray for our nation, that they might have the hope that God gives. May we be a people who praise God with everything we have so that God would be glorified. And may we pray for our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our communities that they may experience the hope and the joy and the peace that is found in God. Blessings.